Hello, hello, it is time for a new adventure. This is the first day of a four or five day trip. I'm going to be going to a place that I've never really been before in Utah. It's basically a series of high mountain ranges and plateaus in central Utah. I'm going to be driving across these ranges and across these high plateaus. When I say high, I'm talking about like nine to 11,000 feet is where I'll be driving. And then I'll be climbing mountains uh, higher above the uh, the road there. Basically, the, uh, the purpose of this trip is twofold. First, I want to drive across Skyline Drive. That is a kind of a famous road here in Utah, famous dirt road. Um, it's a rough road from what I understand. I don't know if my car can make all of it, so I'll do the, the portions that I can, but it's a road that basically drives um, along high ridges at about 10 to 11,000 feet. And so it should be a really spectacular road. There are lots of mountains and lakes along this road, uh, and I'm gonna be climbing mountains and paddling in the lakes and camping up there and at the, at the higher elevations should be really great. Today is July 10th. You're going to be seeing this video months after that, months after this. And uh, the reason for that is just because I have a lot of other videos that I need to get through before you'll be getting to this one. But just so you know, it's the middle of summer, high summer, and uh, that's why I'm going to these higher elevations. It's 100 degrees where I live, um, but it'll be much, much cooler at 10,000 feet, obviously. And the first thing I wanted to show you on this trip is a ghost town. The name of the ghost town is Thistle, and this town became a ghost town pretty recently in 1983. Basically, a landslide dammed a river and flooded the town of Thistle, which was behind the dam along that river. And so um, I'm here at a pullout along a highway. I'm gonna show you the landslide. You can see pretty clearly the path of the landslide here. And um, it was the costliest landslide in US history. It is the only, I think, presidentially designated disaster area uh, in Utah's history. And um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. So first I'm gonna show you the, the landslide itself. It's just out my window here. That's what I keep looking at. And then we'll go down to the town itself, which is still partially submerged, and I'll show you that. So this is the landslide area. You can see kind of the, the darker green on the sides, and then this lighter green. This is all the earth that um, came down in the landslide. All of this earth was up here, and it just oozed its way down the mountain, causing this. This is a natural dam across the river, across the Spanish Fork River. And behind that, the town of Thistle is back here. You can't see it from here, but the lake was formed back here. The lake is now gone, it's been drained. They, uh, they bored a tunnel through the dam here for the river to go through. And so, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty impressive, actually. I mean, that is just a massive amount of earth to be moved. Apparently there was a lot of snow in the winter of, of 82 and 83, and then in the, in the spring it was really warm, so all of that snow turned to water and it just destabilized this whole mountainside, and as a result, you got what you see here. Okay, pardon the road noise, but here are some of the thistle ruins. You can see there's still water here. and all of this green algae filled water. You can see the water is up to about the, most of the way up the first level of the house here. Several families had to be evacuated and uh, yeah, it became a ghost town. Here's a better look at the side of the building. I guess you could take a kayak and go down in there, but that would be pretty dangerous and kind of disgusting. And this is the back side of the dam. Again, this is a natural dam caused by the landslide. It just came down right across and filled the bottom of the valley here.
This looks like it would have been a nice house at some point. But it's been abandoned for a while. So I just had a nice talking to uh, one of the guys in this little SUV or this van over here. His name was Lester and he had his, I think his wife and his kids, his kids with him and uh, he recognized me from YouTube. <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. So Lester, if you're watching this, uh, it was great talking to you and hope uh, the rest of your trip went well. I think it's time for me to hit the road again and head on deeper into the mountains. So I'm just about 15 minutes up the road from where I was, from Thistle. And this is the start, the northern end of Skyline Drive. This is a mountain road, steep grades, sharp curves, steep drop-offs, and other hazards. Proceed with care. From what I understand, this first section, the first 25 or 30 miles, relatively mild. Most vehicles should be able to make it, but it does get rougher beyond that. And I forgot to mention that basically the main goal of this trip, aside from just doing the road itself, apart from doing Skyline Drive itself, is to climb well, I mentioned this, to climb mountains, but these specifically are county high points. There are 29 counties in Utah, and I want to climb the highest mountain or the highest point in each one. I've done most of them. I'm gonna be trying to do seven more on this trip. Once I do the seven more, I'll just have, I think, three left. So this is a big peak bagging trip. Um, some of the mountains are more impressive than others, but the great thing about peak bagging and especially about doing county high points is that it kind of forces you to go into areas that you otherwise normally wouldn't go to. And so you and I will both get to see some very uh, kind of off the beaten path areas that otherwise we'd have no idea existed. So anyway, enough of that. Let's get on with the show. Let's start our, our drive up this road here. herd or flock or whatever they're called of wild turkeys just crossed the road here. driving for about 40 minutes now, still drizzling a little bit. Going through some pretty meadows with wildflowers, these beautiful blue flowers. I decided to stop and stretch my legs a little bit. It's drizzling a little bit, but not too bad. Just wanted to give you a, uh, a panoramic view. Beautiful meadows and aspen trees and wildflowers. The spot over here would make for a great campsite. And I'm not the first one to think so. There's a nice little fire ring up here. I've seen a couple of trailers parked in campsites and I've, I've seen one UTV, but uh, very little traffic on the road. I haven't actually seen another vehicle moving on the road yet. Pretty awesome clouds here. Just a beautiful drive. This is amazing. I think some people probably imagine that cowboys and shepherds aren't really a thing anymore, but they definitely are still in the mountains. I passed a couple of shepherd, shepherd's huts, shepherd's wagons up here. And uh, there are some sheep. There's a herd, a herd of sheep up here. The shepherds camp up here for months at a time, just herding their flocks, tending their sheep. I'm guessing this is a shepherd's horse. Oh, here's another one. Also coming up on two shepherd's huts. They have a very distinctive shape. They're different from just regular RVs or trailers. The 
we've got vertical walls and then the um, kind of domed roofs. And they usually have a stove pipe sticking out of them. I've emerged back out onto the highway, or at least almost onto the highway. There's a paved road out here. I'm still at about 8,700 feet, still pretty high. It took about two hours and 15 minutes to do that traverse. It was about 27 and a half miles, that first chunk of Skyline Drive. Awesome, awesome drive. Amazing scenery, tons of campsites. I mean, there are hundreds of campsites up there. I'm now gonna get onto the highway and go this way and then that way. That'll put me in the area of the first county high point that I wanted to go up today. I think I can drive most of the way up to the top of the peak and then there might be a little bit of hiking toward the end. I don't really remember. I have it all on my phone, but um, yeah, let's, let's see how it goes. sheep on the road. Lots of sheep. I'm guessing that this over here is the mountain that I'm going up. Not 100% sure, but I think that's it. I think that is Monument Peak. I think this is the summit over here. You can see the road it goes up to over here. I think I, I think I'll park over here and then walk up to the top. But this road is surprisingly good, like any car could make it up this section of road here. Okay, so it took me about 25 minutes to drive to this point from the paved road. I'm at about 10,200 feet. This is the summit. You can see the little dirt road coming down. And I think that this is the start of that road right here. Almost at the top here. Looks like there's a little weather station maybe up here at the top. Well, I made it to the top. Monument Peak. I don't remember what the elevation is or which county this is the high point of, but I will put all that information on the screen. Great views up here. There's less than half a mile one way to get up here. It took me seven minutes to, to hike up here. This is looking to the desert, to the east. This is looking south, where I parked. This is looking over to the west. This is the area I was in earlier on Skyline Drive. This is not part of Skyline Drive. This is like a side trip from Skyline Drive, what I'm doing now. And then you can see there's a forest fire. Yeah, not a whole lot more to say. Um, it's nice to be able to climb a mountain without having to do a whole lot of climbing. <laughs> so I'll tick this one off the list and I'll take some pictures up here. And then I'll go on to the next one. The day is still young. With mountains like this, it's definitely the journey and not the destination that is the appeal. Obviously, this isn't some great scenic mountain. I mean, it's pretty up here, but you know, as a peak, this isn't all that amazing. But getting here, 
was beautiful. That road that I took up here and, and then Skyline Drive earlier, that's the part of the adventure that makes, uh, that kind of justifies this kind of thing. It's like, yeah, who cares if you climb a little mountain like this? It doesn't really matter, but the journey is really what makes it worthwhile. You know you're in the west when there are hitching posts randomly along the side of a trail. But I'm gonna get in the car, drive back to the paved road, I'm gonna backtrack on the paved road a bit, and then hang a left back onto Skyline Drive. At least I think I'm gonna be on Skyline Drive again. It might just be another dirt road in the general area of Skyline Drive. Uh, either way, it'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be pretty awesome. I've stopped at this little scenic pullout here. It's a pretty lake. This is called Electric Lake. See some people camped down there. Other people camped over there. Just out boondocking on this beautiful lake in the mountains. I saw this lake off the side of the road and there's a parking lot and no cars in there, so I'm gonna, gonna go check it out. Take a closer look. So this is called Beaver Dam Reservoir. It's a beautiful little lake. And there's a boardwalk going around the edge of the lake, or at least part of the edge of the lake. Oh, I just saw a beaver. At least I think it was a beaver. It just swam right here. I wish I'd gotten that on video. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little trench here. A little cloudy trench. And that's what the animals go into their little burrow or whatever it is through. I saw him go into there. I'm gonna leave the camera there for five minutes or so, see if it records anything. I definitely caught sight of something. I was, I set it up for 10 minutes and about seven minutes in, I heard a splashing. So you'll have seen what it, what it was, what I caught on film, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but I think it's time to move on now. I'll head back to the car and then, and uh, find a campsite. Okay, this is interesting. I saw a sign for Mammoth Discovery Site. Definitely gonna check this out. Okay, this is really interesting. I had no idea this was here. It says, just down this hill you will find the site of one of the most unusual discoveries of a Colombian mammoth ever unearthed. It was discovered in 1988 and it looks like it died about 10,000 years ago. So there are several interpretive signs here. I'm not going to read each one to you. But the gist of it is that the skeleton's now in a museum in Price, Utah. It's at the College of Eastern Utah Prehistoric Museum. There was a guy operating a backhoe here and he unearthed uh, the mammoth bone and then they, he called the authorities and a um, team of mostly volunteers came in and dug it up in five days and hauled it off. And it was an important discovery because it was found much further uh, north and higher in elevation than they were thought to be at around 10 or 11,000 years ago. And, and um, so they were thinking that this is one of the last mammoths to have, to have lived. The thinking is that it got too hot down in the plains where, the, where they normally lived. And so due to 
climate change reasons, it went up in elevation for cooler temperatures and then it died up here. So I believe this is East Mountain right here. This is one of the county high points I'm going to be climbing. I'd originally planned on doing it today, but uh, it's just getting too late, so I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, that is a cool mountain. This is a beautiful valley out here. This is incredible. Okay, I found a couple of campsites here. There's one with a better view, but it's more exposed, so more exposed to wind. There's one just a little bit further down the road. The views aren't as good. Um, but it's more sheltered from the wind. So I think I'm gonna camp in that one, but I wanted to show you this one. Pretty awesome views from this campsite here. Here's the road. And then the other campsite is there, is over here right next to the trees. So it's kind of nestled right next to the trees. So here's the campsite where I will be spending the night. Big open spot. I'm guessing people come here and park there trailers, their fifth wheels. Nice views out up to up the valley here. Huge stack of firewood. There are campfire restrictions in effect right now to prevent wildfires, so I will not be using any of that wood. But we do have a nice fire pit and a couple of nice log benches here. I'm right up up against the trees. I, I sleep on the, on the far side, on the driver's side of the car. And I always like to park that side um, to wherever I have more privacy. So in this case, it's away from the road and up toward the, the little uh, stand of aspen trees. This is an awesome place. I'm really happy with this trip so far. This has been a fantastic first day. Just amazing views, tons of animals, uh, lots of interesting stuff. And I don't think I've mentioned what this mountain range is called. So this is called the Wasatch Plateau. Not to be confused with the Wasatch Mountains, which is the main mountain range that runs alongside Salt Lake City. And it's called a plateau because it is a broad, kind of uplifted area. And then the actual peaks, the actual mountains, stick up a little bit from that. So they, um, you don't see like huge, you know, big jagged peaks. It's like the big, the big uplift and then smaller points coming up from there. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what your favorite part of it was and uh, I'd love to answer any questions you have. Thanks.